Hello everyone, I'm Forecaster Jack Sillen here with a look at the severe weather forecast for Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. Uh, we're going to start off as always with our GOES East water vapor satellite imagery and we can see the same upper level low that has brought severe thunderstorms to parts of the plains over the past several days. Uh, continuing to spin here over the Rocky Mountains, it is slowly continuing to move east um, and the severe weather threat will slowly continue to move east as well. Uh, we can see some thunderstorm activity already ongoing this morning, so that's a little bit of a change over previous days where we haven't seen storms develop until the late afternoon into the evening hours. Um, so we already have some activity producing severe weather here uh, along the uh, Texas-Oklahoma border as well as farther south in parts of Texas. Um, we will watch the, this activity uh, continue to move off to the north and east through the rest of the morning um, with additional storms uh, forming and developing as we head into the later afternoon and evening hours. Uh, these storms here near St. Louis are re, uh, rem remnants of some of last night's activity that uh, developed over Kansas. Um, they will weaken as they move off to the east. Uh, no consequential weather expected with these storms here. Uh, one change in the overall setup uh, for today compared to the past several days is this little disturbance moving through parts of Iowa this morning. So this disturbance will uh, rotate around the northern edge of this strong subtropical ridge that has developed off the southeastern U.S. coast. Uh, and as that disturbance moves east, uh, moves northeast and then east, it will create a severe weather threat uh, across parts of the northeastern states as well as the threat in the plains. So I'll go over both of those threat areas, uh, what to expect, why. Uh, and why as we head through the afternoon and evening hours. Taking a look at our infrared satellite imagery uh, here across parts of the plains, southern plains, we can see uh, that ongoing severe weather activity that I talked about earlier. Uh, these storms producing uh, large hail, damaging winds, uh, and there was a tornado warning out for some of these storms in southwestern Oklahoma earlier. Um, so uh, that's just a reminder that tornadoes could form with some of these storms, uh, although that is not expected to be the primary threat. Uh, so keep an eye on that. These storms moving off to the north and east uh, will bring another round of, uh, of weather to or severe weather to Oklahoma City. Um, here's our uh, uh, composite radar imagery. So you can see this line of storms here. Um, damaging winds expected uh, along the leading edge of these storms, uh, along with uh, heavy rain and lightning. Um, always threats even with non-severe thunderstorm activity. So uh, we'll be watching these storms and uh, throughout the morning and as we head into the afternoon hours we'll see new storms develop farther to the north. So uh, taking a look at our ECMWF uh, thunderstorm composite map uh, we can see that in addition to this area of instability uh, and wind shear down here in Texas and parts of Oklahoma um, that will be fueling uh, the thunderstorms um, that we are seeing this morning, they will continue through the afternoon and evening, moving off to the east. Um, there's going to be another area of favorable conditions developing near Kansas City uh, as we head into this evening with uh, instability, um, plenty of wind shear, very strong southwesterly winds in the mid and upper levels, um, and a frontal boundary here, so that will help uh, to... Uh, create forcing for lift for these storms to get themselves going. So uh, in addition to this southern area that's already active this morning, uh, we'll see a new area of severe thunderstorms develop later in the afternoon and evening uh, farther to the north. Again, parts of Kansas City uh, and or areas near Kansas City, so that's parts of uh, northwestern Missouri and northeastern uh, Kansas. Uh, these storms will primarily pose a damaging wind threat, uh, although large hail is also possible, and you can't rule out a tornado, even though the storm mode is, uh, is forecast to be generally linear. Um, so not a huge violent tornado threat today, but uh, of course tornadoes can't be ruled out, um, especially uh, if we get some of these uh, winds out of the south to become a little bit more out of the southeast. That'll give the atmosphere a little bit more rotational energy for, for any of the storms to kind of tap into. Um, looking at our uh, weathermodels.com forecast radar products, um, again, these are not designed to be precise um, forecasts of exactly what the radar is going to look like or exactly where any particular storm cell is going to track, uh, but it's just meant to give you a general overview of how uh, the setup should evolve throughout the day. So uh, this morning, again, in our northern uh, threat area here, um, generally quiet. Um, it won't be until uh, later in the afternoon and evening that storms develop. So here is uh, 6 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Central. Um, and you can see these storms starting to develop here in this area that we highlighted earlier. Um, storms will kind of congeal into a more linear structure uh, here as we move farther into the evening with that damaging wind threat being uh, the most 
um, severe one and, uh, and large hail uh, also possible. Tornadoes also possible, but again, not the primary threat. That will be damaging winds. Um, farther to the south, we have a, a similar trajectory of storms. Um, uh, although the storms are already ongoing this morning, so you can see that even you know seven o'clock this morning, we have the storm activity. The model recognizes that. Um, that storm activity will continue to move off to the north and east. Some parts of it um, will bring severe weather, although not all of it. It's not going to be a continuous line um, filled with severe weather producing storm cells. It's just going to be kind of more isolated pockets this morning uh, while instability remains a little bit limited. Uh, and then as we move later into the afternoon and evening hours, that instability becomes a little bit more widespread and the, the line of storms will um, fill in a little bit uh, with uh, more widespread uh, potential for damaging winds. Again, the primary threat with this line of storms, although large hail and uh, tornadoes uh, can never be ruled out, especially with some of these discrete cells uh, developing farther south and west of that main line. Uh, more storm cells will develop as we head later into the afternoon and evening uh, farther to the south and west near the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, those storms will produce uh, all, uh, mostly uh, hail and damaging winds, um, although all modes of severe, so hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes are possible. Uh, farther north and east, as I mentioned, that little disturbance um, currently moving through Iowa will uh, move to the uh, east uh, as we head later into the afternoon and evening hours. Um, this will create a little bit of forcing for severe weather, uh, some warm temperatures um, continuing to develop uh, over parts of the northeast uh, this afternoon as the sun comes out. Um, and that, those warm temperatures along with that little disturbance uh, will create some uh, conditions um, that are marginally favorable for severe weather. So not nearly as intense as any of the stuff that we're seeing down in the plains. Um, but you can see these pockets of instability developing. Um, generally south of a Portland, Maine to Syracuse, New York line. Um, so uh, watch this area, interior southern New England um, and uh, parts of New York for some uh, potential severe weather. Um, the limiting factor with this setup is going to be the instability. So if we look at our satellite imagery um, for this morning, you can see dense cloud cover uh, across much of this area. This uh, uh, anywhere again from between Portland, Maine and, uh, and Boston, uh, parts of southern New England, seeing cloud cover this morning. So that'll limit daytime heating a little bit. Um, we were watching this area of sunshine uh, developing across uh, parts of Pennsylvania and southwestern New York. Um, if this can move into New England and kind of uh, retain itself uh, uh, or hold itself together, um, then we will see a little bit more of a severe weather threat. Um, damaging winds will be the primary threat from these storms. If we go back to our uh, composite uh, map here, um, winds are unidirectional, uh, more or less across this area out of the west-southwest. So uh, not too much rotational energy present for tornadoes, although uh, localized terrain features could generate just enough turning in the atmosphere um, to produce a brief weak uh, tornado uh, somewhere in this uh, area here. Um, between Albany and, uh, and interior parts of southern New England. So keep an eye on that, not a huge threat. Uh, storms will be scattered in nature, uh, as we can see with our uh, um, forecast radar uh, imagery. Not every town is going to be getting severe thunderstorms. They're going to be um, much more scattered in nature, so not a, not a line of thunderstorms like we're seeing down in the plains, um, much more isolated activity. Uh, even if storms don't end up producing damaging winds or hail, um, they will pose a lightning threat as well as heavy rain. So, uh, not all storms um, are that. Not all storms will produce severe weather, but uh, storms don't have to produce severe weather to be dangerous. So, uh, that's a look at each of our three uh, sort of severe weather threat areas today. Um, one in the southern plains, Oklahoma into Texas. Uh, one in a little bit farther to the north near Kansas City. Uh, and then one across parts of the Northeast. Uh, also note that uh, these, uh, this severe weather threat in the Northeast, not just limited to New England, uh, areas farther to the West, uh, parts of Western New York, Pennsylvania, um, could also see some severe thunderstorm activity. Again, large uh, hail and damaging winds are going to be the primary threats uh, as we move through the evening. Uh, you can check out any one of these uh, model maps uh, or uh, the satellite imagery that we've looked at today. Uh, these model maps are at weathermodels.com. Uh, you can sign up for our subscription service to view these, um, and that's a, a great deal. We can, you can get lots of, uh, of model map imagery um, produced by Dr. Ryan Maui. Uh, and then if you are looking for um, the free uh, alternative, uh, we have all the stuff available at weather.us for free. 
um, East DNWF full resolution, all these parameters that you can scroll through um, to, uh, to get a sense of any sort of weather setup, uh, be it severe weather today uh, or um, a different weather setup some other day. So uh, check all that out uh, and I will have another update um, this evening, uh, probably in periscope form, um, talking about uh, any current severe thunderstorms that are ongoing uh, this evening, how to track them with the tools that we have at weather.us. Um, and some of the uh, nearer term forecasts uh, for those individual storm cells once they develop. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for watching.